Hi, I'm Elizabeth Holcomb, and I'm with Greenville Shriners Hospital. And I'm here today to talk to you guys about how we are changing lives every day um, by providing an innovative pediatric orthopedic care. Hello. Hello. And <coughs> so today we're going to just talk about a little bit about our hospital system as a whole. Not many people realize that we actually have 22 hospitals throughout the Shrine system. And then we'll get um, into more detail here locally in Greenville. And perhaps you'll be able to see some services that we provide that may benefit some special people that you may know. So our mission um, for the Shriners Hospitals is to provide the highest quality care to children with neuromusculoskeletal conditions, burns, um, cleft open palate, and other special health care needs. And we do that through a very patient, um, patient and family-centered collaborative care environment. These are the 22 hospitals I was telling you guys about. And as you can see, Greenville right there. And um, this doesn't reflect all the different um, clinics that are tied to each main location, but um, you'll see that we'll talk about the clinics that, that have started in the past few years with Greenville. So just a little bit of history. In 1922, the very first Shriners Hospital um, came to be, and that was in Freeport, Louisiana. Does anybody know why? How Shriners Hospital started and the reason why. Anybody? I bet you do. <laughs> <laughs> this is this is my boss. This is Randy Risser, director of business development at Shriners. <laughs> um, so the first the first um, Shriners Hospital came to be as a response to the children with polio um, that were that were being crippled, and so they they opened up the first hospital in response to help those children. So in 1927, the first um, Greenville Shriners Hospital came to be. Um, does anybody know where the first location was? If you guys are familiar with Pleasantburg Drive in Shepherd's Care, um, it's an assisted living facility. So that's where our first Shriners Hospital was. Um, and then in 1989, we grew so big, we couldn't contain our operation within those walls anymore, so we had to move somewhere bigger. So we are now on the campus of Greenville Health System on the corner of Grove and Ferris. Um, a lot of people think that we are um, a part of the Greenville Health System and we actually just leave space on their campus. Um, we do have a great working relationship with them. We utilize a lot of their consulting physicians, a lot of their pediatric specialists, um, but we are independent. So today, we, as I said, we've been doing a ton of growing. So now we're the largest pediatric orthopedic hospital in the Carolinas. When I started about three and a half years ago, there were four pediatric orthopedic surgeons, and now we have eight full-time uh, pediatric orthopedic surgeons. We are also have the largest pediatric spine program in the southeastern region. We treat approximately 7,000 patients a year. <coughs> we see 250 new patients a month, and I've mentioned before um, clinics. We now have outreach clinics. Um, and these, the locations were just decided simply based on where our patients were coming from and how can we improve access for them so we don't have to, to travel so much. So um, we have um, successfully started clinics in Bluffton, South Carolina. That was our first one. Anderson, South Carolina. Johnson City, Tennessee. And Hendersonville, North Carolina. And by the end of the year, fingers crossed, um, there will also be clinics in Spartanburg and Greenwood. So... We are very excited about that. This is our service area. Um, when you hear Greenville Shriners Hospital, you probably don't think about the five states surrounding us. But we um, are, we have a huge catchment area. And the reason why um, it's these six particular states is because all of the little shrine centers where, where the members meet and everything, um, they help to financially support our hospital. So the orthopedic, orthopedic conditions created our hospital, um, scoliosis and spine conditions, uh, musculoskeletal disorders in children, um, and then orthopedic consequences of neuromuscular, neuromuscular conditions. So for example, cerebral palsy, spina bifida. We would treat the underlying orthopedic condition. Um, we also have sports injuries, um, upper extremity conditions, lower extremity, and then hip care is another one of our big growing programs. 
So as I mentioned, we um, we have eight full-time pediatric or pediatric surgeons associated with Greenville Shriners Hospital. One of those is not um, on this particular slide because he is full-time at the Nice Monger Hospital in Johnson City, Tennessee. But we do have seven um, that are uh, full-time within our hospital and rotate throughout our clinics. And I'll also add, um, I don't know if Dr. Michael Wattenbarger rings a bell, but um, he has recently joined our hospital, I guess maybe a couple years ago, um, and we're super excited to have him. He's a really big name. He comes from Charlotte. He actually helped start Ortho Carolina, which is a pretty prestigious um, orthopedic program in Charlotte. So he comes to our hospital bringing a wealth of expertise, leadership, and we're super excited to have him. Also, you'll see Dr. Lauren Leffler, who has since she has joined us in October, has gotten married and has a child on the way. So <laughs> her name is um, so now she's Dr. Lauren Pyre, um, and she's the only female um, pediatric orthopedic surgeon practicing currently in the state of South Carolina. So and I don't know um, about you guys that have um, daughters, but my daughter is six years old, and she's already getting very modest and preferring female pediatricians over male pediatricians. So this is a really good option. Um, for those of you who may know any, any females that would prefer a female orthopedist. So, um, as I mentioned, we also um, we have a great working relationship with the Health System. Um, so, we're able to utilize a lot of their specialists, um, such as um, their urologists, their neurologists, their neurosurgeons, um, pediatric infectious disease specialists. And so, for our children with, um, with a higher complexity of, of needs, we're able to provide a very well-rounded team approach. Um, for example, if you have a child that has cerebral palsy, uh, they would benefit from um, a team of um, uh, pediatric neurologists, pediatric neurosurgeon, orthopedist, um, and then if need be a pediatric neurologist. So it's a very big, very big team that a, a child can benefit from. So I'm going to tell you a little bit. I'm going to take you through our hospital, kind of give you a little tour. The um, outpatient department is the hub of the hospital. So we have about 14,000 visits a year to our hospital. And um, this is also where we have other very specialized clinics for like rheumatology, tone, manage tone management to control spasticity symptoms, genetics, and, and spina bifida. Surgical services. We have two operating rooms and <coughs> possibly, possibly another one on the way. Um, we do a large volume of surgeries, which is really important when you are a selecting surgeon. We make sure you have lots of experience. Um, and, then, and then you can rest assured that we are also extremely safe. Um, our infection rating is extremely low. Um, our average length of stay is less than three days after a surgery, which may be like, oh my gosh, we're just kicking us out. But no, that's just actually another demonstration of, of our um, surgeon's expertise and preparing them. And, and treating them, and um, and as you can see by the very low readmission rate, they do very well and thrive after they're discharged. Um, we have on-site orthotics and prosthetics. This is another really important part of our uh, multidisciplinary team. So if you do have um, a child that is diagnosed with scoliosis at our, at our hospital, um, I hate to use the, the term one-stop shop, but it really does apply here because um, they would be able to get their spinal spinal brace manufactured um, right on site and it also gives our um, orthotists um, immediate consultation if they need it with our surgeons um, and so that definitely benefits our, our children as well. We have a dynamite physical and occupational therapy department. Um, they'll treat children with injury, congenital um, conditions which limit their ability to, to move function. Radiology, this is another um, way that we're very different. Um, a really big feature in our radiology department is our EOS 3D imaging system. Is anybody familiar with this? Okay, so as you can see right there, it kind of looks like a little spaceship, which the kids love to get inside of. It doesn't close. Um, but the beauty, the true beauty of this is that it's the lowest achievable radiation dose that you can get in the world. Um, so, when we originally got, got this um, imaging system, for every nine trips you went and got in and got imaged in the EOS, it was equal to one x-ray worth of radiation dose. Hmm. And then we just got it recently upgraded to where it's even a fraction of that. 
So, um, so now they say each image is just equivalent to being outside for a week in the post-natural radiation. Um, we also have the Motion Analysis Lab for any children that um, are experiencing gait dysfunction. And this is just a really short clip. Lights. Camera. Action. It's the same advanced technology leading video game developers and animation studios use. But here at the Greenville Shriners Hospital, the Motion Analysis Laboratory is helping kids defy the odds. Although just about any movement can be analyzed in the MAL, most commonly, patients are sent here to look at their walking or gait problems. First, the patient and family are interviewed by staff about medical history to better understand walking problems. Next, video recordings are made. These help to provide an overall picture of how the child walks. The patient is then placed on an examination table. The team evaluates the child's bones, muscles, strength, and ability to bend their joints. Highly reflective markers and muscle sensors are placed on the child. As the patient walks along a pathway, 12 special motion cameras capture the movement of the reflective markers. After the data is collected, a team of physicians, engineers, physical therapists, and kinesiologists discuss the results. They recommend a treatment plan and then evaluate how well it will improve the child's function. The plan may include bracing, physical therapy, medicine, or surgery. The Greenville Shriners Hospital's MAL. One more way we are helping kids <coughs> defy the odds. This 1980 Pac-Man graphic, right? <laughs> That's an old video. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. My computers are a lot more high, high tech than that. Yeah. I saw some really old computers in that. I'm like, oh my god. Yeah, it, 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 it at least demonstrates <coughs> the concept behind it. But yes, all of the equipment and technology has been upgraded, and so um, so we're happy to be able to use that. Um, we also have a child life department. I mean, our child life department is so amazing. They bring in critter keepers, you know, the guy with the snakes, and um, they bring in pet therapy, anything that you can think of. Um, on top of also, if a child's getting ready to go into surgery, they take the time to, you know, go over everything that they can ex expect during the surgery and alleviate their fears. And one story that I love to share that just really shows how, how our child life specialists really go above and beyond. Um, there, and you may have heard this story because it went viral all over the world. But there was a dog that was born without, I guess it's two front paws or something like that. And, um, and they were going to put the dog down. I don't know who it was, but somebody was going to put the dog down. So someone called a hospital and said, do you, do you think you might know a child you know, that maybe um, was born by feet or has anything to do with feet that would like to adopt a dog? Well, our child life specialist immediately um, thought of this one special, I guess she's a three year, three-year-old girl and um, who loved pet therapy and every time was around a dog just and everyone was happy. And so um, so she talked to her mom and her mom thought it was a great idea. And when they met, the child said, oh my gosh, there's somebody like me. And since then, they've been inseparable. And, um, and it's just, you know, it's, it's taking that extra step um, to, to look out for your patients and, and connect with them beyond the hospital. So um, we have uh, quite a few uh, signature programs. I'm just going to go through these really fast. But um, our, our spine program is actually, we call it a destination um, spine program because as you saw with the six states, it definitely attracts um, families all throughout those six states to come and benefit from our spine care. Um, I went over the EOS um, imaging system. When you have scoliosis, you have to frequently be imaged, um, depending upon your case. Um, and then so, obviously, that demonstrates a lot of safety and radiation reduction. Um, but we also provide a lot of non-surgical <coughs> options on top of surgical. And, of course, our four spine surgeons, um, they have a tremendous amount of <coughs> Um, this is one of our patients, Hunter Jarman. Um, he had a 143-degree curve to begin with. And um, after one spine lengthening, um, his curve went down to 60. 
he grew seven inches, is what mom says. So um, that's quite quite a change, and you can imagine um, his curve was so severe it was um, hindering his ability to breathe um, efficiently. And so, so not only did it aesthetically improve his appearance, but physically he is thriving, um, and he'll continue to to have um, lengthenings until. Cerebral palsy. Um, what makes what makes our um, program different is, as I've been saying throughout the um, the presentation, is the, the multidisciplinary team that's available to any child with cerebral palsy. This is Logan Hopper. She came to us really early. Normally, when you have cerebral palsy, um, you're probably not going to be diagnosed until you're around two, three. Um, she was diagnosed before she was six months old, and she started coming to us when she was. Um, no, I'm sorry. She was, okay. I think she was diagnosed when she was two months old, but she began Greenville Shriners Hospital when she was six months old. So she was diagnosed with quadriplegic cerebral palsy with bilateral foot deformities. And today, ta-da, she no longer walks on her toes. She is highly functioning. She's extremely engaged in the community. Um, she participates in sports and karate and modeling. And she was her high school had been clean. Does we can enter up real quick? Right? Sure. Didn't Logan present at yeah. our oh, did she? Yeah, she's a fantastic speaker too. Yeah, she's great. She's got a huge Facebook social media following and yeah, she's she's amazing. She's um she's a, the tech person. She's wanting to take her experience to impact other lives. And um and so with her Facebook posts, almost every day, she's leaving inspirational messages and, and encouraging people to reach out to her. So, And then um, our limb deficiency program, um, you can see that there is um, a variety of team members there. And our limb deficiency uh, medical director, Dr. Westbury, um, he has been published. Um, he is very, very well known. And... This is Connor Stroud. Um, he has proximal femoral focal <coughs> deficiency. So when he was two years old, he had to have his legs amputated. But that didn't stop him. He's um, the number one junior wheelchair tennis player in the United States. That's pretty awesome, isn't it? So how do you get our care? We have eliminated every barrier that you can think of. Um, there's only two requirements. You have to be under 18, and you have to have an orthopedic condition, of course. Referrals, you do not have to have a physician referral. If a family wants to just call in and self-refer, that's fine. A school nurse can refer, you can call a parent, and the parent can call in. It's that easy. Transportation and lodging. So um, remember the map I showed you of the six states where um, all the shrine centers are located? Well, they provide free transportation throughout six states to our hospital and back. So um, that takes away the whole transportation barrier. It is such an amazing service. <coughs> the, um, the Shriners are known as Road Runners. And, and it, they're so cute. They're kind of like Boy Scouts because they get badges for every, you know, hundred or thousand miles that they drive. And let me tell you, if they're badged and ready, they're like, they'll stay until it's ready. So, but... Um, we also have um, wonderful um, accommodations. We have, is it six now? Six um, family rooms? Um, we um, have a total of six family rooms with, over the course of the last couple of years have been completely redone. And they're just like little hotel rooms for the families so that they can stay, you know, under one roof with their child. And um, who wouldn't want that? You know, if your child in the hospital, what child wouldn't want their, um, their family staying with them? So it ends up being wonderful. Insurance and billing, don't have to worry about it. All children are treated regardless of the family's ability to pay. Any other questions? Yes. I know it probably depends on what the child is coming to Shriners for, but is there kind of a general rule of thumb between, you know, from the time they first call Shriners, you know, or their first consultation, you know, how, how long is that time period? If they call Shriners, how soon would they possibly be seen by someone? Very quickly. Yeah, I think our average wait time for a new patient appointment is like 
two or three weeks. Okay, all right, that's great. It's extremely okay. different, and that it speaks to the amount of uh, providers. Yeah, that's wonderful. That we have, uh, and it's, sometimes I mean, sometimes it can vary. I mean, it might be you know, three and a half. It just depends right. on what it is. <coughs> It's not nearly as long as what you would be used to. Right, what you would exactly. Use to other well, that's specialists. why I expected it to probably be like know, three months, two months, three months, something like that. Yeah, it's, it's, okay. it's really quick. Yeah, and that's a great question because, again, when I started three and a half years ago, it was about three months because we only had four providers, four mm -hmm. surgeons. Mm -hmm. And um, so I, saw, I saw a lot of long faces out in the community when they heard that. But, um, but thank goodness it has changed. Mm -hmm. Yes. I have one other question. Sure. With the um, and that I promise I'll stop. <coughs> with the um, with the clinics, uh -huh. do um, people come to the clinic to be evaluated and then they'd be referred to come to Greenville for the surgery or any procedures done at those other clinics? Um, like in <coughs> so Anderson and Bluffton. Anderson. And Bluffton. Oh, right. Yeah. So we establish those um, for access. For um, for both for both existing patients and new and better access geographically for new uh, new patients, mm -hmm. um, it's it's only that doctor's office visit component. <coughs> and so a new patient can come. It's an actual doctor's office. We travel with our medical record, with a nurse and with the patient access staff. So it's a fully mobile staff that goes there. Um, it's an actual doctor's visit, and um, we'll follow. If, if no treatment needs to be done at that point, we, we can continue following them okay. in those sort of satellite locations. If there's any sort of treatment that needs to be done, um, it, it, is, it goes back to the hospital. Okay. Um, we find that once a patient is onboarded in those locations, statistically, um, once they um, establish that relationship, like that in Bluffton, it's four hours away. So, uh, but we find that um, most, if not almost all of the patients that are recommended for treatment do end up coming to Greenville and do that. Because they, they like the doctor, they may have established a rapport, we made access a little better. And then we can, we can follow them post-operatively or, or anything like that back in their okay. own community. The Johnson City, Tennessee one's different. We started a full-time practice there in partnership with another children's hospital. Mm -hmm. All that care is delivered in that community. Okay. So that's a brand new sort of experimental model that we've been doing in, in Tennessee. Okay. But the other ones are very much intended to um, drive patients back to the Greenville mm -hmm. while providing better access in, in their community. Okay. Good question. Any other questions? <coughs>